Today I am going to do a post-mortem on that. That is the fuel injector that killed the 6R4. This time last year, I know that's not a 6R4 before somebody tells me. This time last year we took the RS200 to Elvington for Emily to drive for her to be the first ever car she'd ever driven, which she did. <laughs> you can do it, Ems. Well done. Well done, Em. Well done, Em. You happy? Yeah. <laughs> 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 and we also plan to take the 6R4 just to have it there for the event but on the morning that we're due to leave when the transport arrived I went to start it and boom fuel all over the floor no fuel pressure engine wouldn't start big cleanup operation car going nowhere so we just went with one car and when we came back I managed to source some injectors all the way from America Oh, it's like Christmas come early today. There's a parcel and it says United States Parcel Service. And I've been waiting a while for this. So it's another one of those unboxing videos. I've no idea how you get in here. Not a clue. Oh, that was easy. Right. There we go. One brand spanking. Don't know if it's new or reconditioned. It looks somewhere between the two. But it's very clean and lovely fuel injector in a little packet with a silica gel bag. I then spent a few days putting in the new injector, which is tricky in the slightly confined environment in the back of the car. One fuel injector. So that is the injector rail. As you can see, there's two fitted, slightly grubby looking things. But I'll leave them alone. That's an O-ring seal at the top. It looks like a new Greta Thunberg proof one as well because the old nitrile elastomers get dissolved by the modern fuels. And that just pushes into the rail. Oh, it's a bit of a push. There's a groove in the injector that it clips into. That's it, got it on the second attempt. Plug, standard Bosch plug. That then, so you can imagine how easy this is to do in the field if you're 6R4 comes in off a stage on the, the RAC rally with a misfire or anything, mm, injector trouble. Not a big job, <clears throat> that just pushes in. That's the rail back on. That didn't take very long, did it? Two hoses to connect. Not to be a metric nonsense, this is the people who can count to 12 and beyond. And with that done, I put the spark plugs back in, got them clean, put them back, and had a go at starting the engine. Let's see if it's going to work. Put the power on, check it out the gear, because I don't want to punt my tool chest into the garden. Pumps make pressure, and... <gasps> Nearly. More nearly. It lives! And I need to get out of here because I'm going to get carbon monoxide poisoning. Woohoo, that went. That was good. And that was just in time to get us all to Goodwood. And I went to Goodwood with Ems. That was good fun. Again, it's in the playlist if you want to see what we got up to. Hello, and welcome back to the Bloomer Project channel. It's me, Emily. I know that you've been wanting me back, so I'm here. So today, we aren't in the Bluebird shop. We are gonna go to Goodwood Festival of Speed. And we came back from 
Goodwood and we put the car away and that is where matters rested until a few days ago when I was clearing my desk and I found the dead injector and I thought ooh let's have a look inside because I've never seen inside one of these and I'll bet you haven't either because they simply don't come apart they're made in such a way that when they're dead you throw them away you can't unscrew the end and take the top off and peer in or push anything out of it it's sealed so I thought right let's do a post-mortem I've got a fair idea what I think has failed I think the seals in the end have gone more of that in a second uh, but we'll have a look we'll see why it's failed see what happened to it and have a look at all the gubbins inside because I'm really intrigued to see what's in there you see what I think has happened to this is that that little nozzly bit on the end moves up and down and it shouldn't it just rattles ding 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 it shouldn't do that there should be a seal in there and the seal's gone and the fuel's come out from the end of there above that orange extrusion ring and out all over the manifold but we'll see when we get it to pieces now before I start trying to get one of these things apart I thought we could have a look at the cutaway there's a few of these on the interweb so at least you can get an idea and you've got high pressure fuel comes in from the top that's where the fuel comes in this is a little fine screen mesh filter to get the bits out because this will all be very close tolerance in here especially at that end that's the electrical connector where you plug it onto your car and the wires come down here that is the solenoid coil windings and i'm assuming because i don't know this but i'm assuming that when you energize the coil when the engine control calls for fuel this plunger here this arrangement goes bang up into the coil against that spring and at this point high pressure fuel is then allowed all the way down and past this this seems to have some spillways in it past this into this chamber which has a needle valve and again i'm assuming because i don't know for certain that hydraulic pressure lifts this little metering valve off its seat down there and that sprays your jet of fuel out so the principle is pretty straightforward how it's achieved with these tiny volumes of fuel is another matter. We had this with the Hydromech fuel system on the Orpheus engines. Very, very close tolerance parts in there to get tiny quantities of fuel to flow. So that's one diagram. Now I've got another one. And this one is broadly the same. You've got the mesh filter at the top. You've got the coils either side. You've got this plunger. There's no spring or anything. And you've got the, the needle valve metering bit at that end. But what this one shows is less detail, but what it shows is how the thing is actually put together. And it would appear, and we're going to find out shortly, that this assembly here that I've coloured blue is loaded that way from the bottom. And this cap, which is above the coils, is loaded that way from the top. And having loaded all the bits, this edge here is then rolled over to stop that coming out. And this edge here is rolled over to stop that coming out and in so doing it becomes one sealed thing now where i think this injector's failed from the 6r4 is here that's that's a seal that's an o-ring seal in there and you're not supposed to be able to do it but on this injector you can get that end and you probably can't see this but it goes clunk 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 and that is rattly in there that's actually rattling and I think it's because this seal in here is packed up. So let's see if we can get this apart. I've no idea how the plastic's added. I don't know if it's molded on later. It seems to be let in there um, and around this area here. And I don't think that comes off. I think that must have been molded on subsequently. And also, if you look on the actual injector, there's no obvious means by which that comes off. So you can see the rolled edge at the bottom here. You can see that bit. You can't see the rolled edge at the top. So that bit there is visible. You've got a, an O-ring seal and an extrusion ring. So that's the O-ring seal and the extrusion ring and then the rolled edge. That one you can't see. So I think what we're going to do is pop that in the lathe and see if we can machine off that bit and see if that comes out. This could be a press fit. It might not just pull out. So let's get this on the lathe and have a little go at it and we'll see what fires out on a spring onto the bench never to be seen again. Maybe. Right, let's just get a little bit of material off there. Yeah, that's just starting under the steel. 
you can just see it's starting to go into the steel there. So I'll just, just keep, keep that going, going until, until that, uh, well, until it looks, it looks like, like it's, it's done, done something, something basically. basically. Let's take another bite off it, but it's showing no signs of anything moving in there. Mm-hmm. Okay, take a bit more off. This should kill or cure, I think. Oh, ah, 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 ah. Right, I wasn't expecting that to happen. Right, let's take us to the bench and have an examination. Okay, that slightly fell to pieces, and what I think happened was, because I had that in the lathe, I was just gripping the bit that was holding that in. So there is our solenoid, and there's nothing there that has changed my mind about that plastic being moulded on last. So there's the solenoid, it's a fairly straightforward looking thing. And there is the rest of our fuel injector with a little plunger in the bottom. Now, I don't know if that's going to come out. Doesn't come out like that. Hang on, I'll get some forceps. Okay, have a little pull on that. Nope, that's not coming out. I think that has been loaded from the opposite side. So I think we'll get the the cap off, the plastic cap, we'll get the o-ring off, we'll get the extrusion ring off and we'll get the other end of it out, see what's in there. Well there's the cap off and you can see the end of the needle valve and the extrusion rings off, so I'm going to machine that turned edge down and get the other end of this out now, see what we've got in there, because that isn't going to move. That does not feel like it's going to come out of there, I mean, it has to come out eventually. <laughs> right, I saw that lock. I saw the middle bit lock and the outer turn. So that has given in at last. Yep, that is free. Okay, so there's all the bits. All the bits laid out from the o-ring at the top up here. The electrical connector there, the solenoids, which is that. This is the outer metal body. Uh, I don't see a spring. I don't know where the spring is or if it has one. And then there's this nozzly assemble here, which is that. And that little collar fits into the groove on the metering valve. Oh, it's all magnetic. Get off. And that prevents that from traveling too far up. So when you energize the solenoid, this, in theory, would just fly up the middle into this hole, but that collar stops it. That lets it come up just enough to lift the seat. That's not exactly as drawn, but that's all the parts. That's how it works. The only bit I'm not sure of is the spring. Maybe this doesn't have one. Perhaps this just has hydraulic pressure. That one there, that diagram, where's it gone? That diagram there has no spring but it has other seals. So there's obviously variations from injector to injector. But that's what lives in, is there a spring in there? No, there's no spring in there and never was. So this one does not have a spring. There you go. That's what's inside a Bosch injector. Ah, <sighs> what an anorak I am. Well, there's another little slice of your life you'll never get back. But if you're like me, you'll have found that quite intriguing. I know I did, because I'd never seen inside one of those before. So if you liked it, don't forget, like, you subscribe, thumbs up, talk me in the comments, the usual, and I'll get you another little film out later on in the week. So thank you for watching. See you soon, people. Bye. Ha, 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 ha. Method draw. in the madness. Can you draw anything? Yeah. Go on then. What are you going to draw? Why should I do it? Anywhere. Oh, you are so not funny. <laughs> I so am. <laughs>